Thank you so much for talking to me today. Uh, Top Gun is one of my favorite films uh, and, you know, it, it's endured, it's had fans forever. And, you know, I'm curious from your perspective, kind of looking back at the time, it was a bit of a risky endeavor. You know, it was Tony Scott's second movie. Tom was just starting to break out. I know the production itself was complicated given, you know, all the fighter pilot scenes and the Navy's involvement. When did you know, you know, that it was working or did you have an inkling that it was going to be special as, as you were making it? Uh, you don't really know. The audience usually tells you, at least for me. A lot of people say they have a hit movie before it comes out. I never know. I don't think they know either. But all you know is you you put all your energy, your time, and your creativity into making something, and you hope that audiences will embrace it. We we're very fortunate that they embraced Top Gun. And in fact, we have a new version coming out uh, just with color and sound. It's going to be in 130-some theaters, 150 theaters, Dolby Theaters, AMC, uh, for one week on May 13th, which is Top Gun Day. It's also a hugely influential film. I mean, Tony Scott really solidified, you know, his unique visual aesthetic and style on that movie, which really stood in contrast to how a lot of films in the 80s looked at the time. So I was just curious what that experience was like for you as a producer. You know, were there any points of contention or were you eager to kind of push that further into visceral territory? Well, we, you know, we always had to hold Tony back because he was a real daredevil, just like Tom. <laughs> yeah. Everything was safe. And that was that was a, a, a quest with Tony because, you know, at one point he, used to, he drove a motorcycle like a ninja. And we wanted <laughs> to that, that nothing happened to him while we were filming. So we chained up his ninja so he couldn't get take off in it. You know what? <laughs> Old cutters and cut the locks off and took off anyway. So oh that's God. with Tony Scott. That's funny. In terms of the aesthetics specifically, was there any nervousness from, you know, the studio at the time? I mean, it, it was pretty radical what he was doing. Well, you know, what happened is there was a change in management and the previous management wasn't really excited about Top Gun. Uh, Ned Tannen came into the studio and Tony and I and Don went up to Ned's house and he said, Ned told us, he said, I really don't have much to make. Uh, I, tell me what this story is. And Tony just got off a plane with London. In London, he was tired. And he kind of froze, couldn't say a word. And Don, who was a great salesman, you know, and a pitch man, got up and told the whole story of Top Gun, danced around the room and, and told him, the, you know, the, the Tom Cruise kind of arc, the Maverick arc in the movie. And Ned said to me, how much do you think it's going to cost? And I said, I think around 14. And Ned turned to us and to Tony, he said, go make the movie. Those were the old days. That doesn't happen now. You go through <laughs> stuff to get a movie made. Not at all. Um, the, you know, the you've lost that love and feeling scene was instantly iconic. It, you know, it has endured for, you know, these past 35 years. What do you remember about putting that sequence together? And, and did you guys have an inkling of how memorable it, it would end up being? Well, that was Warren Skarin. Warren Skarin was one of the records he worked on. I, I'm not sure if you can credit it. Uh, in fact, the studio wouldn't even pay for him. Don and I had to pay for him. Uh, to, to, to work on the script. And he came up with that idea, you've lost that loving feeling. And the actors love it. They, they love performing it. Tom had a blast with it. So did the whole cast. It's one of my favorite scenes in the entire film. Um, and I've revisited the movie a lot over the years. And I think one of the things that I keep coming back to, uh, and that's really helped it endure, is that it really is kind of a love story between Maverick and Goose. Um, you know, that relationship, that central relationship in the film. And when Goose dies, it, it feels like Maverick has lost a partner. I was wondering if that kind of sense of companionship uh, was discussed much as you guys were putting that together. Well, it, that was an important central arc of, of the story and also the, the love story with Kelly McGillis. So those were the two pillars of the movie. And the third pillar was, was the action and the aviation. Especially in terms of how that relationship, you know, was put together. What, what were kind of the discussions of laying that bare? Because, you know, Goose's death is really surprising in the film and, it, and it's really devastating. You really feel that loss. Well, I think we wanted to take the audience through the experience that Maverick goes through when he loses his best friend. So we take the audience way down and then we start to build Maverick back up so we can get back in that F-14 and, and carry on the last mission. And yep. that's the, the chore that we had to get the audience back from that that terrible accident. I mean, obviously this movie catapulted Tom and his career. Uh, what was it like working with him at that time? You know, he's a very curious actor. He asks a lot of questions. He's all over everything in a good way. He wants to know what everybody's doing. He's somebody who really, 
enjoys making movies. He loves it. He loves the script process. And he was included, even though he was a young actor at the time, he was working on the script with us. He was part of everything in making that film. And he's the best producer now that I've ever known or worked with. So he's he's gone to school on all the great directors and producers uh, that work with them along the way. Has he sent you a thank you card for your work together? Actually, he did. He made Top Gun Maverick. That's the thank you card. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait for that film. Um, I'm also curious about your continued relationship with Tony and Tom on Days of Thunder uh, and how that experience may be compared and contrasted to Top Gun. Well, it, it was, Tom came to us and he said, I want to make this. We can never get the script right. And we, you know, we brought Tony in and we had, I think, I think Warren Skarin worked on that. No, I think Days of, that was Robert Town. Robert Town and and he's, he's got a great voice. He's a fantastic writer. And he, he really got the, the character that Tom wanted to play, Cole Trickle. And, and he, he delivered it for us and for Tony. You've been involved with, you know, so many great films and franchises over the years. And here we are talking about Top Gun 35 years after it was first released. Uh, how does that rank among films when, you know, people or filmmakers want to ask you about? Is it kind of towards the top there? It's always the, on the top of, of the list. The, Top Gun has became such an iconic movie that we're celebrating 35 years later. It's coming back in theaters in 150 AMC theaters on May 13th. So how many movies get re-released after 35 years? Uh, yeah. Quite unbelievable. It also visually holds up so well. Um, you know, we've been through this whole visual effects spectacle and, you know, the CG driven blockbusters that dominate the marketplace. And I think, you know, nothing really beats the visceral thrills of this movie. What, what do you attribute that to? hundred percent Tony Scott. Uh, Tony Scott just designed it, did all the storyboards himself. He'd get up at four in the morning, do his storyboards, be on the set, you know, at seven, get home at one or two in the morning and get up at four. I don't know. He never slept. He was unbelievable. He worked so hard to make this movie, the iconic movie it has, it has become. And, you know, we're inclusive when we make films. We, we in, encourage the actors to work with us. And, of course, Tony and the writers and the cinematographer, we bring everybody in, in to be part of the family to make really interesting, iconic movies. You know, the, the film's legacy has endured. Its popularity has endured. Uh, it's, it's kept reaching generations as it's gone on. Um, and I was just curious, this may be a bit of a generic question, but for you, having been there from the beginning, do you have any idea why this movie connected so well? Is, is there any kind of like quantifiable uh, quality that you attribute that to? I think it's a combination of the artistry of Tony, the trick of screenwriter, and then Tom brought it home. Tom did yeah. it. He's, he became the iconic actor. He was already a rising star. Uh, and this one made him a worldwide star. Uh, he told me stories where he was, I think he was in Africa or scouting for some another picture he was working on. A little kid runs up to him and, uh, kind of pulls on his coat and says, Maverick, Maverick, this is a place that had no telephones. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's quite amazing what, what a movie can do to capture an audience around the world and, and put out our, our values and, and the kind of great filmmaking and filmmakers that we have. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Uh, thank you for Top Gun and all of your films and best of luck with Top Gun Maverick. Thanks, Adam. I really appreciate your time.